So how to tell bees from wasps from flies. When many people in the general public think about bees, they think of the European honeybee first and foremost. And this is because the European honeybee is the dominant pollinator in US agriculture today. One of the reasons that the European honeybee is used so extensively to pollinate watermelons and almonds and apples and blueberries is because someone, probably named Longsdorf, um, figured out how to make honeybees nest in boxes that can easily be picked up and transported and placed into a field when pollination services are needed. So because of the ability to move these honeybee hives from field to field to field, over time, the European honeybee has become the dominant pollinator that production agriculture has relied upon to deliver the pollination services that farmers need to bring watermelon and berries and tree fruits to actual harvest. However, the European honeybee is just one of approximately 4,000 bees that we have in North America, <coughs> and only one of approximately four to 500 bees that we have here in the state of Oregon. A lot of what I'm interested in are those other bees, not necessarily the European honeybee. Um, so like I said, just one of 500 species. Uh, so here is a photo of a bunch of flies in this row right here, a bunch of bees in this row right here, and a bunch of wasps in this column right here. And as you might be able to tell, uh, flies, bees, and wasps can look superficially alike. However, if you just stop and look at a couple of key characteristics, the eyes, the legs, the antennae, and the hair, you should be able to tell the difference between flies, bees, and wasps in your own home garden. So I'm going to go over how to apply um, these, these tips so that you can identify what is actually the insect that you're looking at in your own garden. So for bees, the key characteristics that you want to look at are the hairs on the body as well as the hind leg on the bee itself. Now, something about the hairs. When you look at a bee, one of the key characteristics of a bee is that they're very furry. They are covered with lots of hairs, and if we take a microscopic look at what these hairs look like um, close up, you'll see that they look like feathers. They're known as branched hairs. And I like to liken them to having a really bad case of split ends. Bees are covered with hairs that are forked, bad case of split ends, and that enables them to hold more pollen. In each and every one of these nooks and crannies, pollen grain, pollen grain, pollen grain, pollen grain can stick there. And that's one of the reasons why bees are such efficient pollinators of flowering plants. So when you look at a bee, you are not going to be able to see that branched hair itself. However, you will be able to see the volume of, and the fluffiness. They have a distinct fluffiness, which is different than the hair covering other insects. Now, also the hind leg of bees is thick. It's thicker than that of a fly. It's thicker than that of a wasp. And if you start to notice, just looking at the hind leg, in particular, if you look at some wasps, you'll be like, oh, those skinny legs, that can't be a bee. That has to be a wasp. Um, the hind leg of a bee is thickened in large part because many bees carry their pollen on their hind leg in something which is known as a pollen basket. So not only is that hind leg thick, but on one side of the leg, they actually have a depression where they can pack in the pollen. And on the other side of the hind leg, they have combs. So they basically can comb the pollen off of all of their hairs when they visit a flower and pack it into this pollen basket right here. You've probably seen that yourself on bumblebees and on honeybees. Um, when they have a pollen basket, which is packed with pollen, it looks like these little pollen ball, little pollen ball, little pollen ball on the hind leg. If you see an insect in your garden, which has kind of like a very voluminous, fluffy, hair-covered body, and a thick hind leg, that is a bee. 
If you see an insect in your garden with a little pollen ball on the hind leg, that is definitely a bee. So what do bees use that pollen for? Well, bees actually collect the pollen. They collect nectar as well. Um, they hold the nectar in their gut, and when they get back to their hive, they actually regurgitate that nectar onto the pollen ball, and they mix it together in something which is known as bee bread. And then on top of those little loaves of bee bread, that's where they lay their egg. And when that egg hatches out, the bee larvae can't move very far. So basically, the bee is being a good mama by baking some bee bread, which will feed her larvae until they're large enough to go out and forage on their own in the world after going through metamorphosis in the hive. So that's bees. Remember, bees, fluffy hairs, thick hind leg. Now wasp, on the other hand, they may also have hair. So look at this hair fringe face of this yellow jacket right here. However, if we take a close up look at what the hairs look like, they are straight hairs. They don't have split ends. And when you look at them, it gives them a somewhat subtle but different look from the, from the bees. Bees are fluffy. Wasps, by comparison, tend not to have as many hairs on their body. And even if they do have hairs, those hairs don't look fluffy. But the really telling thing, for me at least, to tell a bee from a fly is the hind leg. Wasps have skinny legs. I always think of them like, oh, you chicken leg, you have to be a wasp. You can't be a bee. Because that third leg is distinctly skinnier than the third leg of a bee. Now flies. Um, flies, you look at the eyes and the antenna. Flies, compared to bees and wasps, have stubby little antenna. And they have eyes which take up almost their entire face. I always think of that campy horror movie like the, the Fly and that poster of just like the man fly with the nothing but eyes covering the entire face. Just every time I see a fly, I always kind of, um, they're not my favorite insect, I do have to admit. Um, just kind of like think flies whenever I see them. Stubby antenna, eyes which cover the entire face. So I think we're going to take a quiz now. Are we going to take a quiz? Okay, so um, this insect right here, a bee, a fly, or a wasp? Um, so it's kind of hard to see, I'm sorry. Um, this is actually a fly, so this is the eye. <laughs> this is the eye, eyes covering the entire face, and stubby little antenna. I'm sorry, it's harder to see in this picture here. Okay, how about this one? A bee, a fly, or a wasp? A wasp. Excellent, this is a wasp. This is actually a very common wasp that you have in your gardens in this area. It's one of my favorite. When you see it flying, it's this iridescent blue-green stripe, but this skinny leg is a dead giveaway that it is a wasp. This particular wasp is known as a sand wasp. Anyone who has a garden which abuts um, any of the rivers or streams in this area, you assuredly have this wasp in your backyard. They're very, very common, especially on properties that abut the river. And that's because they nest in sandy areas and the banks of the rivers tend to be clear of vegetation and to be somewhat sandy, so it provides a lot of great nesting sites for these wasps. Okay, how about this one, a bee, a fly, or a wasp? This is a bee, so notice the thick hind leg. You can kind of see the fuzziness on the body. The eyes don't completely cover the face and the long antennae. How about this one right here? This is actually a bee. It's harder to see because it does not have many hairs on its body, but look uh, right here is a thickened part of the leg. Right here is a thickened part of the leg. Uh, this is actually a male bee because remember, bee mamas are the ones that are collecting the pollen and the nectar to feed their young. Male bees really aren't all that great of a parent. They're just kind of along for the ride, hoping they'll meet a female eventually. Their legs are not as thick as a female 
these legs, but they still do carry the vestige of having a thicker leg rather than just a straight chicken legs of a wasp. Oh, this is honestly one of my favorite insects of all time, bee fly or wasp. This one is a wasp. So here's this chicken leg, no thickening of the leg right there. Uh, this is what's known as a cuckoo wasp. When I see these flying, I actually think of them as like jewels of the garden. They're so beautiful. In this area, they tend not to be as bright blue as we have right here. They tend to be really iridescent green. And they're called cuckoo wasps because just like a cuckoo bird will lay its eggs in another bird's nest and basically trick another mama into raising her young, cuckoo wasps do the same thing. They're parasites of bees, social parasites of bees. They sneak into the nest of a bee, they lay their eggs among the nest of a bee, and they trick that bee mama into taking care of their young. So that's why they're called cuckoo wasp. They are social parasites of bees. Oh, this one right here. Uh, so here are the antenna. This is just the antenna right here. Here are the eyes. Okay, so this is a fly. A very adorable mimic of a bumblebee in the garden, but this is actually a flower fly. Stubby antenna, eyes covering the entire face. Um, just in case you're interested, you actually can tell male versus female bees in the garden as well by looking at the shape of their antennae when they're at rest. Males have longer antennae than do the females, and males tend not to have a crook in their antennae, whereas females tend, when they're at rest, to have like a, a little joint in their antennae. Um, the way that I always remember females have like the jointed antennae, the elbowed antennae, is I always think of myself like pointing to my husband, like direction. So I always imagine myself like kind of pointing, no, here's where you go. And he's much more relaxed than I am as a general rule. So he goes with the flow and I'm the pointer. Um, just a couple other things, like I mentioned, males tend to have a little bit of a skinnier leg, male bees, than female bees. Um, female antennae tend to be more uh, smaller and jointed. Uh, males have longer abdomens and no stinger um, or no ovipositor because the stinger on bees is actually a modified egg-laying device. So males tend to have a rounded abdomen and females tend to be a little bit pointier because they have that egg-laying device or a stinger if it's been modified in the social bees um, relative to males. Okay, so that's your tutorial on how to tell a bee from a wasp from a fly. I tell you that not to say that bees are better than wasps and flies. They all can be really essential allies in the garden. In particular, it is hard to convince people to understand that wasps have a place in the garden as well um, because they were so bad this summer because of the drought. Um, but wasps are really efficient predators of things like caterpillars and aphids in the garden. So they really do help with pest control. So it's always kind of a balance between um, their nuisance factor and their biological control, natural pest control factor. And where you fall along the lines of tolerating the nuisance and embracing the pest control delivered by wasp is probably a personal decision. But just to let you know, if you um, really hate wasps, just consider that they do serve as natural pest control agents in the garden. And many flies are also very effective pollinators of flowering plants in the garden. Not as effective as bees because they don't have those branched hairs, but you'll notice if you've ever let cilantro go to seed or lettuce go to seed, a lot of times what's buzzing around there, what's flying around there are actually the pollinating flies.